What's up everybody, it's Alec from Silver Wings Coffee and today I'm gonna show you how to brew a V60 using the 4-6 method. Let's go. So the 4-6 method is a V60 brewing technique that was created by Tetsu Katsuya. Uh, back in 2016, he is from Japan, and he created this brewing technique that actually won the World Brewers Cup back in 2016. He describes it as a very simple brewing method that actually creates a very complex and diverse cup of coffee. And the reason why it's called the 4-6 method is exactly how it sounds. He's splitting up the coffee into two different pours. There's the four, first 40% of the pour and then the remaining 60%. The first 40% of the pour focuses on sweetness and acidity. And then the remaining 60% focuses on the balance and the strength of the coffee. So instead of getting too deep into it and just me telling you how it works, I'm just going to make it and we can explain along the way. Okay, so now that we have all the equipment together, let's get into it. Just using a standard Hario paper filter here. And the recipe calls for about 197 degree Fahrenheit water. So I just put this on my stove and then waited just a little bit for it to be taken, for it to cool down. The recipe we have here is 20 grams of coffee. Now you're gonna grind your coffee a little more coarse than you would uh, for a regular V60. The reason for this being is a coarser grind can create a cleaner cup of coffee. So we're not going all the way to a Chemex size, but it's somewhere in between there. So on my Baratza Encore machine, I'm grinding at about a 16 to 18. Uh, it's just slightly coarser than I normally do, so we're just gonna see how it goes. I love this coffee, by the way. I got it today from uh, Lady Falcon Coffee Club, which is in San Francisco. It's in Alamo Square Park, or the uh, you know the famous park where all the the full house houses are. Beautiful. So let's just pour this in there. All right. So like I said, 20 grams of coffee. Got to get everything in there, and we're just gonna level out the bed. God, it's, ooh, whoo, smells so good. So before we actually start brewing, there's one thing to take a look at here. So the amount of water that you're pouring in each consecutive pour is actually very important. And how it's divided up will actually play a huge part in the final cup of coffee that you have. So the first part is focused on sweetness and acidity, and the second 60% is actually focusing more on the, the strength of the coffee. So how we're gonna calculate it is like this. Multiply the total amount of coffee that you have, so in this case it's 20 grams of coffee, multiply that by three. That should be the total amount that you have for each pour, the amount of water for each pour. And then you're gonna multiply 60 by five, and that brings us to 300, which is the total amount of water we're gonna be having in this pour, in this coffee. So with that, the first 40% of that is going to come out to a total of 120 grams of coffee because it's split up into two pours. If you want a slightly more sweet cup of coffee, you pour a little bit less than you normally would. So in this case, it's 60 grams. I like more of a sweet cup of coffee as opposed to an acidic cup of coffee. So I'm only going to be pouring 50. So here we go. And there's no bloom on this. It's just, you just go straight for it. Boom. Make sure you saturate all those grounds. 50, good. And this is where I like to just give it a little bit of a, a swirl to make sure it's all evenly saturated. Okay, so I got about 50 grams of coffee in there and then what you're gonna do is you're going to, uh, whatever you didn't pour in that, or whatever the remainder was, so in this case it's 10 grams of water, you just put that onto the next pour. So I poured in 50 when I should have poured in 60 because I wanted to be slightly more sweet. So the next pour is going to be a total of 70 grams. We're just gonna wait for all to seep through. There it is. And the total goal here is to get 120 grams. 
of water. There you go. And it's really, really important to use a gooseneck kettle here, 120 grams, because you want as much control as you possibly can. Now between each pour, you're going to make sure that all of the water seeps through all of the coffee. Tetsu says that he does that specifically because he believes that that amount of time is what the coffee needs in order to breathe and to really bring out these, these flavors. It makes this brew method slightly more diverse because a lot of them you want to fill it up to the near top and keep that temperature in, but this actually works out best when it's more cooled down. Okay, so now that that is done, almost all seep through, the next 60% of it, or the, the, the three remaining pours that we're gonna be doing focuses on strength. Now, if you want a stronger cup of coffee, you're going to do more pours, and if you want a weaker cup of coffee, less pours. So right now the base is about three. I'm just gonna stick with three, so we're gonna do three pours of 60 grams each. So the last one was 120, now we want 180, okay, good. So this recipe actually takes a little bit longer, specifically because you're letting it seep through uh, all of, you're letting the water seep through all of the coffee grounds. Now, that's not to say it's necessarily bad, but it definitely takes a little bit more time, but I'm fairly certain it is worth it. So here we go, we're going on to our fourth pour. A little bit more, good, good. And it is also kind of important to be exact on these pours. If you are shooting for 50 grams and you accidentally end up going closer to 60 grams, it's, you know, the sweetness really isn't gonna come out. So try to be as exact and precise as possible on these pours. And that just comes down to a matter of how precise you are with your kettle and your, your coffee pour over game. So at this point, I'm gonna start just preheating our cup this is almost done and we have one final pour left almost there okay good this is the last pour and that will bring us up to a total of 300 grams perfect boom 300 grams on the dot i am very very proud of that so I came across this recipe back in 2017, I believe, and I've brewed it a couple of times. I honestly love this recipe, and what I really like about it is the diversity you have with it. You can, you can make a sweeter or a more acidic cup of coffee. You can make it stronger, weaker. It's really, really interesting, and I think what I really like about this method specifically is it's really easy for someone who's brand new to coffee um, they can make this, you know, they can make this recipe and it, it doesn't have to be all crazy. There's not a lot of math involved. It's just very, very simple. It's very, very easy. So now here we have our beautiful, glorious coffee. There you go. I think that's, that is going to be great. Uh, one other thing that was recommended and what I've found in the past is drinking this in smaller glasses and then letting it cool down a bit because it brings out, um, you know, slightly different flavors. Very interesting. It's very clean. Uh, it definitely brings out the, the sweetness in this coffee for sure. Um, I'm tasting some notes of, I wanna say caramel. This is like a perfect cup of coffee to like have chocolate with. I should go get chocolate. That's what I should have done. Oh well, I have chocolate chip cookies in the oven right now and that's gonna be incredible with this. Well, that's it. So I hope you learned something about uh, this whole brewing method. And honestly, I don't ever want to say that I've settled on one brewing method. Like I said, I've, I found this one years ago and I just recently came back to it. Um, the, a brewing method or a brewing device is there to constantly be altered, constantly be changed, new recipes found. You can create so much with various different recipes for these specific brewing devices and it's really important to constantly keep changing and adapting all of these different recipes. And that's what I've really been focusing on in the last couple of months is really dialing in not only what my quote unquote favorite V60 recipe is out there, but just 
finding what works and what doesn't work. And this brewing method is up there with, you know, one of my favorites, but I'm never gonna say I found my favorite V60 recipe. So, yeah, we're just gonna keep drinking coffee until, until those cookies are done, really. That's, that's the end goal here. Okay guys, well thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you learned something. If you like this style of video, or if you have something else in mind that you would like me to do, please leave a comment down below and I will try to make it for you. I love making videos and there's a lot of really exciting things that I'm working on for Silver Wings right now. We have some special things specifically in the city of San Francisco that are, I'm just very, very, very excited about. My entire goal with Silver Wings is to bring together the coffee community and while it may be really hard to do that worldwide. Um, I'm really focusing on doing that specifically in San Francisco. So more on that later. There's a video and a bunch of other things in the works that I'm working on right now, but stay tuned for that. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. It really, really actually does mean a lot to me. Um, if you liked it, feel free to like and comment and subscribe. And yeah, otherwise I'll just be here creating coffee and uh, having some fun. Thank you guys. See you in the next video.